Hi everyone, this is Brian, Brian's son. In this video, you will learn how to install OpenShift 4, which is the latest Kubernetes container platform from Red Hat on Amazon Web Service or AWS using IPI, which is stand for Installer Provision Infrastructure. So what is OpenShift 4? OpenShift 4 is the latest Kubernetes solution by Red Hat. OpenShift 4 offers enterprise-level container solution platform that can be deployed on AWS, Azure, Google Black Cloud Platform, VMware, Bare Metal, or, or pretty much anywhere on-prem. OpenShift 4 offers the Kubernetes operator, which is lifecycle of your Kubernetes native application and full-stack security. So there are two different installation methods available for OpenShift 4. OpenShift 4 trying to make easy as possible also but customize as you want. So for somebody who wants just simple installation, which can be done in less than an hour, you can use Installer Provision Infrastructure, IPI. So IPI is deploying OpenShift cluster on infrastructure that installation program provision and cluster maintains. Pretty much everything is automated and is an easy way to install and still customize. Alternative approach is user provision infrastructure called UPI. is deploying OpenShift cluster on infrastructure that you prepare and maintain. You can customize as much as possible but still, IPI is recommended if you want simple installation. In this video, you'll learn how to use install OpenShift 4 using IPI. Before moving to the following installation step in this video, you need to meet some prerequisite. Because we are using OpenShift 4 and deploying on OpenShift 4 on AWS, you need to have the virtual machine from Amazon Web Service and you can, you can log in as a root user. So you can SSH into that and log in. And you're okay with the paying the cost of Amazon Web Service for usage installation. Note that just for installation, it can be quite costly. So you need to know what to expect. And you need to know the basic of a Linux command. We'll execute a number of different commands. So you need to be able to follow and execute the command. So what you will have at the end. So you will have OpenShift, cluster, OpenShift 4 cluster with the three master node and three worker nodes. These are created by default as a resource, but, but there are also a number of other resources that we created from the AWS side. Each node will have this, the different instance type, and but it will have all be default to m5.xlarge. That's quite costly, so you know what to expect. At the at the end, you have access to the OpenShift cluster through the web console, or you can also you log in using API using the command line interface. The cost they should learn around $40 to $60 just for the installation. But if you keep using it, that will, the cost will definitely cost more. And that's just for the installation step. One of the ca caution is, make sure to shut down and clean, clean up, or destroy the cluster if you don't want to incur the cost. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first step is to install the AWS client. And so we want to run the curl command. You can also use it wget, but we are just copying. You can just copy and paste the, the link for, to the AWS client, but bear with me and you can just type the command here and then run the curl commands to download. So this will download the zip file and you can see here, as you can see with the ls command, and you're going to unzip it. So we unzip it. Step two is we're going to unzip it and then that we just download it. Next thing we want to do is we're going to get the latest OCP version. So we can go to assess.redhat.com. For this, you need a subscription. If you don't have the subscription, you can go to Red Hat Developer, um, Red Hat Developer site and create an account. 
um, go to OpenShift and then see the latest version. Right now, 4.6.3 is the latest version. So we just remember that. So step three, we are gonna lot download the um the latest OCV installer. So we're gonna use it OCV version for um OCP installer as well as OCCLI. So we're gonna just create a export um the environment variable for that for that six dot three for this demo. But so then we wanna use the wget command to download it, and this is the uh, URL. Again, the OCP version is going to use it for this OpenShift installer download, but also later OCCLI command line interface. That's why we're using as a um, the variable here. So this is a tar file. So, and we just download it, and we're going to untar. And then paste and then untar into um, specific file name, and then we're gonna put it into user bin. So we're gonna remove the, the file we just downloaded to clean it up. This is optional step, but still, it'd be nice to have. And we're gonna make it executable. By default, it should be executable already, but just to make be to sure ensure that it's executable, we wanna um, first see if it exists, and we wanna just using the the tmod command to make it executable. Let's x make it executable for the file. And this done. So next, we want to download the latest OCCLI. There's a command interface to interact with the OpenShift. So OpenShift provided two different um, ways to interact. One is using the web console, as you will see later. Other thing is the CLI. CLI definitely offers more options and more uh, flexibility to deal with the cluster and manage cluster and etc. and the resource. So definitely really nice if it the more like must have. So this is a URL. Again, you would want to use the OCP version um, environment variable again because you want to use the same uh, version for OCCLI and the OpenShift container platform. And you want to untar just like a because it's a tar file. And we want to remove it just to clean it up. And we just want to make sure it's already executable, but we want to make sure that it's executable. And that's it. Step five is going for continuing but we just want to verify that it is the actually we can have that um, OCCLI and then server is available just to ensure that is the command we can we can execute and is available under under user bin slash user slash bin Step six is optional, so you can use it. Um, OpenShift as a command that can be auto completed, so you can just completion bash command to do that, and this make it in for the bash. It will make it auto complete. This is just for convenience later on. So now we exit out of the from the uh, sudo or the root user, and we have the you need to have the SWS key and then the SS key. So if you're not, make sure to look it up. Right now, just entering the uh, the um, the fake 
get this SS key and then but we'll replace with the your own SS key and the secret key. We're gonna create a file out of it in the next step. So that's what you need this for. And then for the region, just choose the closest one. It always offer different region from using the US East 2. So now based on the environment variable you just created earlier, you're going to create a file that stores the AWS identity. So we're going to just say, and then create a new file and a new folder. We are going to cre uh, create a new folder called .AWS. And then we're going to create a new file called um, credentials. Here, we're going to put these key value pair. And then AWS's key is going to refer to the environment variable we just stored. And same for the secret um, access key. And the region is the same. And he's going to make an EOF by end of file. You can call AWS get caller identity to verify STS and get caller identity to verify that actually is stored. So next step, we want to get the OpenShift token. So this is for the installation. For the um, you need to have that access token to install, and you want to provide it in the when you trying to run the installer later as a final step. So there's different ways um, to install OpenShift, but we chose the OpenShift on the hybrid cloud or the public cloud. We cho choose AWS here. Because that's kind of what we use. And again, we have two different options. We choose IPI. And we're going to get the copy poster grid. You can download it, but we're going to just copy the poster grid. Make sure to not to lose it, or that we can get it again. And almost the last step is that you want to run the installer. So just to type OpenShift and the installer, or install, and create a cluster. And directory is the home directory, and give it some name. So we're going to choose AWS and then we're going to choose a U, a US is 2 let's close this one and we're going to click create a, um, choose the, uh, the base domain and cluster name and then paste the pull secret we just have. This will take a while, should take about 30 minutes or so. But should they have information ready once this is done? You might see an error if there was any like broken pipe or whatever, but otherwise you should see a successful message with your cluster URL and then how you can log in with the um, using API, etc. And all the username and then credential for cube, uh, cube admin. That's for root, root username. So that should be that should be it. And once you have the OpenShift cluster, uh, you can just go to your browser and then you can log in and you can explore. So this is OpenShift 4, looks pretty cool, right? So you can just see the number of project, existing project running already and you can start playing with it. As a tip, if you want to um, see the um, the log log because something can go wrong and you want to make sure that you can actually capture that or you forgot the user and password because you just clear the window so how you can see it is you can go inside uh, where you download it and then install and you can just uh, see cat open ship install log and should be able to see it so that's it this video show you how you can install open ship 4 which is the latest open shift Kubernetes platform by Red Hat on AWS Amazon Web Service using IPI, Installer Provision Infrastructure. 
IPI is easy way to install um, OpenShift 4 within less than like an one hour and then really great way you're just getting started. So thank you for watching and then be sure to subscribe or leave any question if you have leave any question on the the video if you have any further question. Thank you and then see you next time.